Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Broadway Plus Plus Cast with your host, me. It's Taylor. Um, very excited to have the amazing Ellie McLemore joining me. Woo! Reveal yourself. <laughs> we've tried to start this recording about 50 times and we keep laughing so we've done it now it's fine it's great how are you doing today oh i'm so good how are you doing tonight <laughs> I, I, i'm good it's halloween um this episode is definitely gonna go out in like a month but it's halloween so it's great Woo, spooky <laughs> I've, I've got my christmas teddy in the background so i'm giving really mixed signals at the moment um <laughs> It's great. Um, Ellie is amazing. She has taught workshops for us. She teaches one-to-ones for us. She sends video shout-outs out for us. Um, you can go to broadwayplus.com to book Ellie or to find out more information. She's been in Bring It On. She's been in Heather's. She's going to be in Six because I'm going to make it happen. She is amazing. Find her on TikTok because she is so funny. Um, we're going to ask her some questions about her past her present, her future. We're going to find out everything about her. Um, so let's get started. Question one. You originated two roles in two very different musicals, Heather's and Bring It On. Uh, talk us through how it was for you, like the audition and rehearsal process, creating the characters, performing it, and also recording the cast recordings, because that is so cool. It is so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so funny you say that they're different because they are different, but I look at them like they're also kind of similar, like adaptations of movie musicals. Yeah. I mean, one's about cheerleading, one's about like death, so that's not very similar. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing that being able to create something from the ground to this, this Broadway stage is always cool to see like your personal quirks that you have about you, what they put into the show. Uh, my audition process for Bring It On was I was 19 and I was living in LA auditioning just for TV film mostly. And I met Andy Blankenbuehler and Alex Lackamore, who are the team of Hamilton now. Everyone knows them. And in the Heights, they all work on the same stuff together. And I was um, I just came in for my first audition and I, I originally auditioned for Campbell, which was the lead of the show. And they're like, why don't you bring in Campbell and this character Ava next time? And they're like, well, then I came in for the whole team and they're like, who do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be a or I want to be Campbell. And they're like, OK, she's Ava. And I was like, I want to be this character. And now I would never take it back to the world, obviously. But that was so fun and just we went on tour for 13 different cities and we got to see all these cool places and the show changed a little bit um and then when we brought it to Broadway obviously that was magical and amazing and and we um we were open for six months and it was actually like an extended tour stop from um it was like it was the end of our CETA contract. So it was actually considered a tour stop, which was a fun little fact, but uh, it was on Broadway. So that was a cool tour stop. Um, and then it was probably the best experience of my life. So I will, it, it's like when you have like the most magical thing happen to you and you want everything to be that magical. And it's just like, oh, that was just like lightning in a bottle. Like I have to take that experience for what it is. Cause ever since then, I'm like, it will never be as magical as like your first, your first show. So that was that. The audition and rehearsal process was, um, I auditioned in LA and it was um, a bunch of TV LA people, not a lot of theater people that were known for theater auditioning because Andy Fickman did it and he um, directed lots of movies and he did theater as well. But it was basically all these people I had never seen before. Normally, you know, in, the, in New York, you, you see the same people, but it was a whole new group of people I'd never met. And it was maybe like, I want to say it was like eight hours that first audition. There were just hundreds of people coming in. They were putting uh, different uh, groups of people together. I originally auditioned for Heather Mack and Heather Duke. And then I read Heather Mack one time and then I kept reading that and I never did the other one again. And um, it was crazy like that we were auditioning for a workshop in LA, like a two week workshop at this Hudson theater. I think the walls are made of like cardboard. Like it's a tiny, like 99 seat theater. It's tiny. And we did that for like two weeks and we had like horrible costumes, but people like loved it. They were just freaking out. Then we figured out 
when we were in LA that I was going to be going to New York in January or February of the following year. And I was so excited just to move back to New York and be there. And that thing just like blew up. It, it, it didn't get super popular until recently, but um, it, it, it's too bad that it wasn't open when, when it was actually popular because like we would have sold out so many more tickets and we, we closed within six months because people weren't buying tickets, but you know, it became what it was. And it was, it's, it's amazing to see how that thing has grown. Like it just from this tiny little, tiny little theater that we did it in and, and, um, at the Hudson. Oh, next question. What was your musical theater training like? My, well, okay. So I don't know if this isn't really considered musical theater training, but I come from a performer family, like in magic in Las Vegas. So I've been performing since I was like four years old on stages and, we, we went on tour with my family. My mom was a dancer and she was like the line captain. So she taught everyone the choreography and, and my sister was in the levitation act. My dad was the pyrotechnician. So I've been performing since I was very young and watching my mom. Um, she's a really, she's an amazing actress and an amazing dancer. And she, um, she did this show called the magical empire in Las Vegas. And it was kind of like an underground, like Harry Potter, like magical type show. And she, I would just study her because she's so funny and it is all her mannerisms. And I, I just studied everything about her. And weirdly enough, like, I think that most of my training has been besides um, I'll get back to that, but, but just like studying people that I love, you know, and I always tell people like when I'm giving lessons, I'll say, the best training is really to copy people that you like, because once you do it yourself, then it, it comes out as something else. I'm not saying copy everything they do, but like your heroes, of course, everybody that, that is talented or successful is copying someone in some way or because you're inspired by them. Yeah. So it was that. And then my dad worked at Phantom of the Opera and Lion King grow, like growing up. So then I would take private lessons with like their ensemble and I would do concerts with them and um, musical theater in high school. But I, I didn't go to university. I just, I took a lot of, I took private lessons and acting and singing and and that sort of thing was, was mostly my training. And then bringing on was like, honestly, the best training ever doing yeah. eight shows a week, you know, so that I really got a lot of my experience by doing the thing, which was lucky and also probably <laughs> scary for them having a bunch of 19 year olds in their cast. <laughs> but um, that was, that was my training. That's what always like stress, like lessons if you can't if you can't afford yeah. to go to a school well you know or if you can't there's access to so much out there even you know there I'm not going to tell everyone to go like go on YouTube but like there's a lot of information on the internet just like good yeah there's a lot of bad information too but <laughs> there's there's um there's ways of of learning if you can't if you don't have access to like fancy schools and stuff like yeah and books are great as well there's um, so old school there's lots of books um you know with like good vocal technique tips and stuff like that in um and like sheet music and everything that you can always find i always find those useful but i definitely think that like i know it's i know it's easy enough to say go and get a broadway job but like doing it eight shows a week is definitely the best training because you have the salmon you get the stamina you know you get it in your body you kind of there's it, drama school can prepare you for a lot but it can it can never really prepare you for eight shows a week you know depending on what it is you know if you're if you're in the ensemble of a show where you never leave the stage um for your first job out of drama school you're never gonna have done that um you're gonna have done like six shows in a week for your third year show which is really exciting and it's really good and it's great to get you know the kind of production in there um but i think doing it is is just is the best medicine <laughs> Yeah, I, like you said, it's easier, but you can prepare yourself, but nothing is going to, you just have to, at some point, just trust what you have learned and, and go for it. I mean, that's, you're such a good example of that. You work so hard. <gasps> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any funny audition stories? But I'm the worst auditioner on the planet. So all of them, like, <laughs> funny, I know that's like, it's so scary. That's they say auditioning is a job, right? So yeah. um, none of my auditions are good. So that it's probably going to come across as a horror story. Um, 
I go to every audition like dressed up as the character like probably to a point where it's like a little bit too much <laughs> but so for my Heather's audition I came in my mom's like 80s blazer and I wore my hair like how I ended up wearing it not I mean not, not, I wore a crazy wig but <laughs> I ended up wearing my hair how I did it kind of and like they they're like we thought you maybe were insane or brilliant <laughs> but I'm like but it worked following on from that have you got any funny on stage mishaps um yes actually I don't know on TikTok do you follow is JJ is that his name yeah JJ and Eman. okay he did a uh, Heather's one which he's so he's hilarious but he did one and, and he was talking about he was dressed in the yellow Heather costume he, his earring like fell off stage and I was like that literally happened to me on stage I could not believe it he's like really I'm like are you a psychic that I did I think of that though because I'm like wow like He's, he's really good at what he does because he knew that happened before you know like people slipping on it and I mean nothing too crazy only in bring it on one time like I had my trophy at the end and I'm shaking it it's like the biggest accomplishment the epitome of the arc of my character winning this trophy and I'm shaking it shaking it and then it literally like breaks in half <laughs> and like falls off the stage and I think the whole cast just started like because they're like frozen watching me and I think they were, I just looked back and they're all like trying not to laugh and it fell off the stage. And I didn't know what to do, so I like jumped off the stage. <laughs> it was like way deeper than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought I was just going to like jump it up, like <laughs> jumped on this. And I like, re I freaked out and I took the, I like got the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the trophy I'm like do I get back on the stage <laughs> I didn't know how to go so I like ran like and I ended up in the lobby like where the merch was <laughs> so <laughs> that's like one thing that comes to mind how did you get back on stage in the end I, I admit I after <laughs> after that moment I don't come on for like another few minutes so like I think I just didn't say like my last line and I was just nowhere to be found <laughs> for a while <laughs> And I'm like literally if I like end up like bursting out the doors in the merch area just trying to find my way back without being seen. My favorite one is there's there's <laughs> there's a girl um that uh, she just left Les Mis in the UK but she was in it for quite a few years um she was most recently the dance captain and she was on tour with it and I can't remember exactly when it was in the show but she like she was doing a part of the show and she fell into the pit um she like went obviously forward too forward on the stage and she fell into the pit she fell on the brass section oh. apparently someone like looked in and asked her how she was from the audience and her first no. reaction was to say like i hope you're enjoying the show or like are you enjoying <laughs> And they had to like stop the show and she had to like call out and stuff. But like she fully did this fall into the, the and she's a swing as well. So like obviously she wouldn't have even been on for like, you know, a, a, her oh. own track she does eight shows a week. She's just on <laughs> a random track. And she just she's falls like on the saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> That's my worst nightmare. Literally. And I just, I just think about that so much. Like, oh like, not during Les Mis. I can just picture like like 19, 20 year old you like hopping off the stage and like getting the trophy and be like, and then just running to the back and just ending up in the lobby like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Two halves of a trophy. <laughs> help, help. I should have, it's a little bit my fault that I didn't know how to get back on stage. <laughs> I should have known that. This was like maybe the very end of the run. <laughs> I had no idea where I was. Okay. We are on to the quick fire round. There are seven questions and you have to answer without hesitating or thinking. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Three, two, one. Milk or white chocolate? White chocolate. Orange or apple juice? Apple. Heather C or Veronica? Heather C. East coast or west coast? East coast. Chocolate in the fridge or cupboard? <laughs> chocolate in the fridge or cupboard? Chocolate in the fridge? Is that a British thing? Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Night or day? Day. Summer or winter? Summer. Taylor or Tice? Taylor! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sorry Tice, love you, but Taylor wins. <laughs> yeah. 
So my last question, can you just talk a bit about your teaching, what you love about teaching, um, why people should learn, want to learn from you, what you can bring to the table, um, that sort of thing. This is my plug. Well, first of all, I think that there are a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of bad information out there. And I think it's all about finding the right teacher for you and whoever you click with. It doesn't mean, you know, I think a lot of the my students or people that I teach, it, if we click, then that's amazing, you know? So I think my approach to it is to really just... Thank you so much, Ellie. You can book Ellie by going to broadwayplus.com slash artist slash Ellie McLemore. You can just go to broadwayplus.com to view our full range of artists. Ellie is available for literally everything and she is amazing. She is a brilliant teacher. So make sure you go and book. Make sure you subscribe because there will be another Pluscast episode in two weeks where I will be interviewing another very, very special guest. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Ellie who is here I don't know if she's here on your screen but we'll see um, <laughs> we'll see you soon guys thank you so much for tuning in bye thank you bye